Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany. Spooky season is in full swing now and I've come to realize I have never made an original concept vampire before. And let's be honest, this seems almost criminal, so let's rectify that and get started. For my base doll, I chose a G3 Draculaura, mainly because I'm addicted to customizing this new face sculpt and body type. I use my electric shaver and I buzz her hair down to a short stubble. Once the hair is out of the way, I can drop her head first into a cup of boiled water. This will soften the vinyl and make it easier to pull her head off without damaging the neck peg. I have found with the new G3 heads, it's best to give the initial tug to pull over the first little bulge, then use your tweezers to coax the vinyl over the prongs. Now that I've removed her head, I use my flathead screwdriver and I scrape out the remaining hair plugs. Because the new G3 dolls have their hair melted in place, it can be a challenge. With the plugs loosened, I will extract it through the neck hole with my needle nose pliers. I plan to reroute this doll, but I want to make sure that if the scalp is visible at any point, it's not so obvious. So I give it a coat of paint to match the hair color. To reroute the doll, I'm using two different shades of hair from the Doll Planet's high temperature line, Daredevil and Smitten. I will alternate the shades as I go. I pick up a small plug size piece, about 15 hairs, and I wrap it around my finger and I adjust the two ends to make sure they are even and that I'm in the middle of the plug. I slide it onto my rerouting needle and tighten the loop, then carefully plunge it into one of the existing holes. I do this until I question my sanity and I have a fully rerouted head. This color looks so amazing on Draculaura and I'm already so excited to see how she turns out. I secure the hair with some liquid fusion glue and I set the head aside to dry for a few days. I always use a stick to swirl my glue around because once upon a time I was squishing the vinyl sides together on a doll and it caused the scalp to split, so never again. I finally get around to removing her factory paint with some acetone. I usually do this earlier in the process, but I really wanted to see how she looked with this hair color. I tackle her clothing first. She'll have a layered look on top, so I'm going to start with the innermost layer, the crop top, because it will affect the fit of the jacket. I cut my pattern piece out of this metallic faux snake skin and I sew the darts. I have sketched out my pattern on the wrong side of the fabric and marked the hem lines, but this fabric wound up being too thick to look right hemmed at doll scale, so I cut it off later. I clip off the excess dark fabric and heat seal the edge. I add a velcro closure to the back. One side is sewn completely hidden on the inside and the other side is a tab sewn face out so when the two sides meet, it's a flat butted seam to create less bulk. Using jump ring ribbon and glue, I add straps. I try to use tweezers so I don't glue my fingers together, but who am I kidding? It's always going to happen. I finished off the top with a studded pleather band, and it turned out so cute! I absolutely love it! The biggest headache of this project was the jacket. This pattern took me forever to make. I assembled the pieces, and since the fabric was so thin, I lined the bodice portion with interfacing for easier handling. I fold the assembled jacket in half with right sides facing, and sew up the sleeves and the teeny tiny side seams. Since this is a crop jacket, those side seams are almost non-existent. I flip the jacket right sides out and hem the bottom opening. I use glue to hem all these seams because I don't want to have visible stitching. The closure was a bit of a challenge, but I landed on using magnets. I fold over the top edge and I glue a magnet into that created pocket, and then I glue a corresponding magnet to the inside of the other side, and I secure that with a bit of fabric. I finish off the jacket with some chains and charms. I especially like the filigree moon on the back. Time for the skirt. I decided to go with a mini skirt with a layered ruffle hem to show off those thighs. I sew the skirt front to the bags at the side seams, sew gathering stitches on the ruffles, and hem the top edge of the skirt. I gather both ruffle layers until they're the same length as the bottom of the upper skirt piece. 
To gather the fabric, I sew two rows of stitches on the longest stitch length on the machine. I tie one end of the stitches off so they can't move. Then I take the top two threads on the other side and gently pull. This doll involved a lot of custom patterns, so I wound up digitizing them all and making them available to certain Patreon supporter tiers. I made these ruffles very roughly so they are thick. To cut down on the bulk of the seam, I will be hemming the bottom edge of the skirt top with glue, then stitching the ruffles on right side to wrong side with all of the fabric facing up. This way, there's just fewer layers of fabric right there at that seam. I stitch both ruffles down at the same time so there aren't multiple lines of stitching on that edge. This is why I glued the hem at the bottom edge of the skirt top instead of stitching it. While the skirt was still in the flat stage, I sewed on some embellishments then added the Velcro. I used the same method as before so that the two edges just meet. I can then add a ribbon to the crotch to prevent the skirt from riding up and sew up the back seam. With that, the skirt is done and we have a complete outfit. Finally, time for my favorite part, making accessories. I wanted her shoes to be killer, so I modeled her some platform shoes with skull bags and a dagger heel. But I've also been hard at work getting styles available for my Etsy shop, so be on the lookout for these to drop hopefully this week. I've got them printed on my reflex and they look amazing. A bit of sanding and a coat of primer and they're ready to go. I sent these out to my Dynamite Tier Patreon supporters this month as their tier reward. I do want to say thank you to all of my friends over on Patreon. They helped make these videos possible. Angel Book Walter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Galena, Mary Helen Burns, Stephanie L., Hanu Made This, Josephine, Delicious, Amber S., Awkward Burb, Bex Mini Studio, Camille, Dancing Johari, Echo1911, Kitsy, K. Whippell, and The Oak Magpie. I keep the paint job simple and just dry brush gold onto the skull so that the crevices are still black and it makes the details pop. The dagger blade and handle get coats of silver. These came out so great, and I wish I could have a pair of these in my size. Not like I have any place to wear them, but you know. Her purse needs to be equally fitting for a vampy vixen, so I designed some graphics to use on a purse. A set of lips and fangs, of course. I cut these out on my Cricut and peel away the unneeded portions. I love doing that. I take two pieces of pleather and I sketch the outline of my purse onto the back of this and I'm going to glue two pieces of warbler that are the same shape of my purse to them. I trim away the excess and I glue down the edges. I'm clipping the curves for a flatter and smoother edge. Now I can iron on my designs. I did have to be careful because I wasn't thinking when I chose Warbla because the heat would soften it, but it didn't cause me too much trouble. I glue a gusset in between my front and back pieces to make up the body of the purse, then I use jump rings, ribbon, and chain to create the strap and attachment. I know it doesn't look like it because of the long wait between videos, but I have been super busy this Halloween season. This is actually my third doll, but the other doll is part of a collab, so you'll have to wait until next week to see her. I may have accidentally changed my daughter's mind about her Halloween costume this year. She went from Medusa to Vampire, and I think it's because she wants a bite me bag like this. For the face up, I use various watercolor pencils, pastels, and some mica powder. A full list is available in the description box, and if you're interested in more in-depth information about the pencils I use, be sure to check out my Beetlejuice video. I've gotten my doll base prepped with three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat, and I start the face by sketching in her eye shape. I don't want her eyes to be as large as the sculpt, so I sketch them in a bit smaller. I have to work extra hard at eye shapes and symmetry, and I tend to do a lot of erasing when getting something I'm happy with. It's just one of my biggest struggles in my art. What is something you struggle with with your art? I'd love to hear. I personally have to get better about just sketching eyes and practicing symmetry on paper. 
I wound up erasing the eye so many times that the pencils would no longer build up pigment. So I laid down as much white pencil as I could and figured I'd wait until the next layer to try to get an iris and pupil placement that I was happy with. That honestly seems to be a theme on this channel. <laughs> This project did give me an opportunity to do some interesting colors and textures on her skin, which I love. I love adding lots of pops of mottled color and more pronounced veining. I channeled my inner Josh Sweden and added lots around the eyes. I don't know if you noticed, but the font that I used on the Bite Me decal was the Buffy font. This doll definitely made me want to go back and watch the series again. Had Buffy on the brain. I decided to go with red eyes to tie into her color accent. I've already done two other Dracula repaints, one with purple eyes and one with yellow, and I wanted to stay away from those colors, as well as similar colors like blue and brown. That really only left me with red and green, and to me, red seemed to be a more fitting color. I did briefly consider adding yellow or black to her scleras, but I felt like doing that was going to look a bit too demonic, and I wanted to keep her more human looking. The better to lure unsuspecting victims into a sense of false security, you know? You get the feeling that something's not quite right, but you just can't put your finger on it. I wanted to push a bit more texture on her skin, so I'm dabbing a watered-down red color onto the sides of her face and drawing the excess paint away with a Q-tip. I have to say, four years ago when I first started doing repaints, you would never see me reaching for a paintbrush for anything if I could help it. My lines were never clean or delicate, but I've been putting in the effort to practice my brushwork, and I'm a changed woman. I love adding finer details with the brush now, and the lashes I'm able to achieve just look so much better. I'll definitely keep pushing my skills. It's always encouraging when you see improvement in your work as an artist, even if it's just the little things. Right now, she is just a spooky vixen, so let's add the fangs. I paint little triangles on with white watercolor, and once it's had a chance to dry, I do some shading around the tiny teeth. I add the final details of catch lights and highlights to the corners of her eyes and waterline. A dash of sparkly mica powder is the cherry on top. I love how she turned out. The G3 Draculaura is quickly becoming my favorite sculpt. After I've sealed her thoroughly with MSE, I move on to styling her hair. I spritz it with water to make it easier to handle and I separate it out into several sections. I take the two front sections and I smooth them down and tie them off underneath the hair in the back. I take the top section and I try a few styles and I really like them but I couldn't figure out how to secure them. I settle on pulling her hair up into two small pigtails on top instead. I would love any tips you have for styling nylon hair. With the top portion styled, I can now add some curls to the bottom. I use tape on the tips of the hair and wrap them around my curling rods. Originally I wanted a looser curl so I simply let the wet hair dry overnight but it was a bit too loose and I wound up curling them again in a hot water bath. With the hairstyle, she's finally done, and you'll remember, here's where we started. And here's where we ended up. I decided to name her Lizette the Wicked. Let me know what you think about this wicked girl. I love hearing from you guys. I always read every single comment, and I try to respond too. Lizette is unfortunately no longer available. One of my Patreon supporters took advantage of the first offering perk and snapped her up. I do have a couple of other dolls available on Etsy though, so just look for the link in the description box below. I wanted to thank you so much for watching this video and staying until the end, and remember, always be creating!